Hi everybody, it's Laura, how are you? So, I am on a um, coaster making spree, getting ready for a Christmas craft fair. And as I'm doing these coasters, I'm doing like eight a day, so I can get a good stock built up. And I'm doing them in rapid and consistent fashion, like I'm doing four of each type, each color combination. And I realized something today. Um, I think it's a very good explanation of how to put your colors down. Um, while it's important to be able to blow consistently and blow well, I just learned something very important because I have been getting fabulous coasters all morning and I thought, what am I doing? How am I not getting any goofs here? And I figured it out and I have kind of a, a good phraseology to explain it. So what I do after I um, um, finish my coaster, I scrape the paint off to the side. This is not important. It's just a tip that you can use so you don't waste that paint. So scrape up the extra paint and put it right in the center of your tile because what I noticed I was doing differently than I usually do is I had a lot of paint in the center of my tile and I also used today for my pillow I'm finishing up paint cans this is GLE 3000 from Glidden it is way thicker and you know <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, we always say your pillow should be the thickest. Your colors would be thinner than that. And your cell activator would be thinner than that. Well, I'll tell you what. That color place that I usually use is kind of thin. It's still thicker than my colors, but it's kind of thin. This GLE 3000, look at this. It is very thick. So... I'm putting this mound right in the middle over the paint that I scraped off because here's my phraseology. I am building a mountain, okay? That is what I found that I'm doing. So I'm going to put my colors down and I'm going to be certain to start right in the middle. And, and then I started thinking it's kind of like how lava comes out of a volcano and it builds that mountain in the center and then it oozes down the sides. So when you're a beginner, it's probably good to think of it this way. Make sure you have a lot of paint right in the center because what happens is your pillow and your colors are going to hold up that cell activator and it's going to stop when you have all that paint right there in the center it's going to stop you from it's not necessarily going to stop but it's going to be less likely that you're going to blow through your pillow uh, through to your pillow and get the white poking up through your colors so, and it's going to allow you to blow that cell activator farther and to be able to get your colors, your cells, out to the edges. So watch, I'm starting right in the center and I'm building this mountain. And it's getting very tall here. <laughs> we've got that scraped paint, we've got the pillow, We've got all these colors, and it's very elevated. So think of it as a mountain or a volcano. You know, I, I know a lot of times when I start laying my paints, I start out here on the outside and kind of come to the inside. Well, today I noticed I was starting on the inside, and boy, did it provide some excellent results and also don't dilly dally around here putting your paints on 
when you're ready to get going, get to it and do it because they tend to spread out. Look at how that, that first color of brown down there has spread out already. It's, it's really moved. So don't fiddle around. Okay, one more. So I've got quite the little mountain going on here. And then I'll show you. See, I'm doing it again. So I'm concentrating. Get in that center. All right, so this, like I said, this is very elevated. Now, you also want to be sure to put enough cell activator on so you have enough cell activator to blow around. So now, I am staying away, staying far away. I'm just getting a little center spot here, just spreading that, but, but I don't want to lose my mountain. So you don't, you want to be far away. And then, just blow out to the edge of your pillow. You're not trying at this point to get all the way out to the edge of your tile or the edge of your canvas. Because if you try that, you're gonna get some pillow to show up. Now actually, I think that's my titanium white that I put down last. But, um, now see, I, I don't have any pillow showing up here. So this is great. And look at the cells are out here. The cells are out here. So you, you don't want to concentrate on getting your cells out to the edges when you're blowing. You're going to spread those cells out to the edges when you're spinning. And because we have a lot of paint on here, that's the other thing. Don't be stingy. So I noticed today what I was doing um, subconsciously, I was using more paint and um, therefore I didn't have to touch up my corners or my edges because you'll see this is going to spread. Hold on. And then what I also noticed in the past is when I blew with my turkey baster, I was getting down to the pillow too quickly and I'd have more white in my center. With this way, now this is my titanium buff light that's showing up here, but with this way, you're not blowing through to your pillow because you had so much paint in the center to begin with. You've got room to blow and hit a color rather than hit your white pillow paint. So I'm getting colors popping up in those cells right now. That means there's still colored paint under there. And this is a good thing. That's what you want. So don't be stingy. Use enough paint. Build it up like a mountain. Start in the center and let it like ooze out like a volcano as you're putting your paint down and if you're having problems with your blooms I really suggest you find the thickest pillow paint you can now that color place like I said was thinner it's probably the thinnest one that I have um, next thicker up from that would be the PPG multi pro that works nicely for me and really, really thick is this Glennon GLE 3000. It was so thick when I started that I actually added a little bit of water to it because I thought it was way too thick. But now I see that thick is great. Thick, look at all these cells. So, and I've even got paint out here. I know I used more paint because I haven't even spun this yet. And I have paint out here 
to scoop up and put on my corners to help it along. I don't usually have that. So you do not want to be stingy. And and you're going to scrape this paint up if you're if you're doing coasters or small tiles, you can lift this paint up off of here when we're done and put it on the next tile in the center and it gives you more more cushion. So now we're going to spin. Now we're going to see these cells. This is when the cells are going to get out to the edges more. Now, because you're using more paint, you're going to have to spin more. You want to make sure to get enough off of it so you're not getting cracking. But look at all my edges are almost all. Look at these cells out here. Look at them. That, so the... The misconception, you, you want to think in your mind when you're blowing out your colors that, oh, I got to get those cells out to the edge. No. If you use a ton of pillow paint underneath there, not a ton, but a, a bigger amount, it's going to spin out rather than you trying to blow it out. Then what happens if you're blowing too far, your cell activator gets too thin, you don't have enough of it, you don't get nice cells. So look at that. It's 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 off the board here already. See? So the cells get to the edges because of spinning, not because of blowing. So when you blow those colors out, you just want to get to the edge of your little blob of pillow in there, and, and that's it. Don't try to get them out to the edges while you're blowing. Isn't that pretty? Let me show you. Um, I'm going to bring this over. This one here is one I did. Look at those cells. They are all the way out to the edges just by spinning. Isn't that pretty? And then I'm going to show you another, one, the other ones I did this morning. You would not believe two of these. Cells all the way out to the edges. This one was the best one. That was my first one this morning. There are cells, oh, that was a good blow. I did very good on that one. And the cells are just went all the way out to the edges while spinning. And you know what I did on this first one? I decided I was going to use my scraped up paint from other paintings. And I keep that in a jar, like so. And I'm not afraid to use this because this is just scrapings. It's it's like the subconscious thing that, oh my gosh, this paint is so expensive. I don't want to use any more than I have to. And it um, you really have to use paint. So I think that's why that first one turned out so good. Because I was not concerned about being stingy or wasting that paint in any way, shape, or form. Let me get this out of here. And I'm going to do another one. We'll do one more. So the takeaway is use enough paint. Try to find the thickest pillow paint you can. And don't blow out past your pillow. You're not trying to get it all the way across the tile first thing. You're just trying to get it blown out onto your pillow. And build your little mountain here. Now see what I'm doing? This is all puffy pillow here. I'm just adding extra to my pillow. So I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid, but I'm not leery to overuse new paint it's going to give you a better product now see i'm gonna i'm not going out so far when i pour it on there but i've got a good 
quarter inch, half inch, approaching a half inch pillow going on right there. Start in the center, build your mountain. So now I'm going to keep that in my mind. I'm building a mountain and let it expand. And you end up with a super fluffy marshmallow pillow there. And I don't know when I got into that habit of starting it with the outer edge of the circle when I'm putting my paints down, but I know I did. So I'm starting in the center and going out from there. So this was like a, a happy little discovery this morning because I have not had one bloom turn out bad this morning and this is my eighth tile so i thought i'm on to something i have to share it building my mountain and that's kind of why it's also important to start with a paint color as your first color down it holds everything up if you start with a pigment it's just going to want to sink but that thick paint thicker paint just holds everything up now here i'm going to show you can you see that let me see that on the tip that is how thick that whole pile is right there so that is oh, let me see i'll measure it for you just so you know because i'm sure somebody would like to know it's just over it's between an eighth and a quarter of an inch so that's how thick those paints are right there right now that's pretty thick Make sure you use enough cell activator. Don't be stingy with that either. Now you're coming down just to get that spread out just a little bit. Not too much. That's all I'm going to do. I just want something that allows me to get my blower down and start blowing across. And I'm not, I'm just going out to the edge of the pillow now look at that no white coming through no white now I think what I will do I might take care of that right there real quick these little ribbons here you can blow those out just a little to soften them. There and there. Good. And I'm far away too. Now I'm going to take my turkey baster. Gentle light puffs from far away. And I'm still getting color in those cells in the center. I'm not going through to my pillow because I built my mountain. Got cells out here, out here, out here, out here. And there's enough paint 
that it's going to spread those out to the edges of the tile. The amount of paint is just as important as the consistency. Now you can see, this usually doesn't happen. I have paint out here that I can grab, so that means I've used enough paint that I have that extra coming off already and I haven't even spun it. So that gives me something to put on these corners and then I'm not going to have to touch up my corners or fill in any little spots. I would fathom a guess. So let's spin. And we're spinning a lot because we used more paint. So I hope this makes sense. I, I kind of think I explained it well. And I, I like that analogy of building a mountain. Keep building up that center so you have enough paint to do what you want to do. Let's take a look. See that? These cells are getting out here. They're going off the edges. And we're still going to spin some more. So how do you know when you've spun enough? You know you've spun enough when you tilt your object and you are getting, um, you're not getting any uh, movement. If it's still moving on you, you gotta, you gotta spin a little more. Okay. Good. Look at, look at all that. Isn't that pretty? So there you go. That's how you you do it. I know sometimes we just get misconceptions in our mind or habits in our mind that you know, oh my gosh, I have to blow this all the way out to the edge while I'm blowing. No, you don't. And you get the conception misconception in your mind. Oh gosh, I'm using too much paint or I don't want to use too much paint. It's so expensive. I'm going to try to use as little as I can, and it just gives you so much beauty if you use a lot right from the get-go. So then I'm going to pick up this tile, and if I were going to do another one, which I'm not because I've done four of these before I got on here, um, I would scrape that up, put it down on the next tile in the center, add my new pillow paint, and have an already enhanced mountain to start. So I'm tilting right now. There is no movement on the tile. So we're good. All right. I hope this helps you. Um, I'm glad I figured out what I was doing and what I changed somewhere along the way. And, uh, it's just helpful to remember. It's almost like I want to make a little index card telling me what do I need to remember before doing a bloom. And refresh my memory every time I come down to start to paint. And it'll just work better. So if this helped you, please give me a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to my channel. Drop any comments or questions in the um, comments. And I will see you later. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.